my name is Penny and as usual I'm here to talk about some bookish things. Specifically today I wanted to take you through some of the books about introversion that I've been reading lately. So over the last few months I've read eight books about introversion and while I didn't find exactly what I was looking for I still found some books that I think would be worth recommending if the topic is something that interests you. Just to give you the backstory, when I started looking for books about introverts and introversion, what I was really looking for is a book that would tell me some advice about how to approach life or some strategies to work that would allow me to really benefit from the strengths that I have as an introvert. Unfortunately, most of these books instead focus on reassuring the reader that it is in fact okay to be an introvert. I don't know if that's just because all these books are written from an American perspective and American culture is much more extroverted than New Zealand culture where I come from. New Zealand I would say is much more introverted than America as a whole. Obviously that doesn't hold for individuals. But growing up I never felt like being an introvert was a bad thing. In fact as a kid I was often complimented on my ability to be independent and focus on things, take things away, think about them and come back with good insights. Like I never really felt like being an introvert was a weakness. Uh, but some of these books went to such great lengths to reassure me that it isn't a weakness that it almost felt like they really believed that it is. I did manage to find a few books with some useful advice but for the most part I was kind of disappointed. So if you do know about any other books about how to leverage your skills as an introvert then I would love those recommendations. But anyway let's talk about the eight books that I did read and you can see whether they might be useful for you. So by far the most well written book that I've read about introversion was Quiet by Susan Cain. This isn't a surprise because this is the book that most people talk about when they talk about books about introversion. This book I think has the best explanation of what an introvert actually is. Basically introverts tend to be a lot more sensitive to stimulus around them which can be a weakness in terms of we often need to take ourselves away in order to re-energize ourselves and we can get overwhelmed more easily. But on the other side of things it can be a strength because we're more likely to notice things and we don't need that constant stimulation that extroverts crave. Actually while I'm describing this also worth noting that introversion and extroversion are not completely separate distinct things. It's a scale and you can be somewhere in between. Most of us are somewhere in between. So it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking about extroversion and introversion as like completely black and white. People are either one or the other and all the attributes of an introvert are going to apply to any introverted individual. But in reality it's not really true. Everybody's different. Extroversion and introversion are more just tendencies about how you prefer to behave. So don't ever let anyone tell you that you're not going to be good at something just because you're an introvert or an extrovert. Because that is bullshit. It's more just that in some cases some things are going to be harder for you than other people who have a different tendency towards introversion or extroversion. Make sense? Probably not. But what did make sense was Quiet by Susan Cain. I think it's definitely the best book to read if you want to understand more about introversion. It does go into the history of the study of personalities and how this idea of introversion and extroversion came about and how extroversion being put forward as the ideal has really affected American culture. And it did actually make me wonder how much people's anxiety is exacerbated by the fact that they think they need to live up to this extroverted ideal. I did also read Quiet Power by Susan Cain which is essentially a lot of the same material but targeted at teens or the parents of teens and I definitely think if you have an introverted teen you should read it. Unfortunately the parents who would probably most benefit from reading this book are the people who are the most likely not to read this book so I don't know how that's going to work out but if you happen to be watching this video and you are concerned about how quiet your child is maybe you should read Quiet Power. Because while Quiet focused more on like understanding the concept of introversion, Quiet Power did provide a lot more advice about how to be an introverted teen, how to cope with school and all that stuff, and also how to parent an introverted teen. So uh, it was a much more advice focused book. Uh, as I'm not a teen and I don't 
have a teen it wasn't so useful to me but I could definitely see that it could be useful. So then the next best introvert book that I've read was Introvert Power by Laurie A. Helgo. Now I will admit that this was the first introvert book that I read and I do think that uh, my ratings went down as I listened to more and more just because so much of the material was repeated that the more I had to listen to it the less tolerant I was of this constant reassurance that it's okay to be an introvert. And just you can only listen to the same material being repeated over and over before it gets rather tedious. Uh, so obviously this one being the first one I was the most tolerant of any of that. But I will say I had a look at the Goodreads reviews for all of these books and in every single one the people who were rating all of these books the highest were people who had just stumbled across this idea that it's okay to be an introvert. So if you think there's any chance that you might be an introvert but you've always thought that that wasn't an acceptable thing to be, that it wasn't acceptable to be quiet and keep to yourself, then perhaps you would be one of these people for whom any of these books could change your life. But I still would recommend Introvert Power over some of the other ones. I thought it had some really good advice. Another thing that this book did that I liked is that it challenged the idea that most of the population is extrovert. So I think the stat most commonly quoted is that it's about two thirds of the world is extroverted um, but this book went a little bit into the history of where that statistic came from and some other potential statistics that might be more accurate. In truth we can't know for sure there's a lot of difficulties in measuring this in a non-biased way but it does seem quite likely that the number is a lot closer to 50%. So most of the messages out there will try to tell you that if you're an introvert you're in the minority but that might not be true. And honestly, if it's not true, then that adds even more strength to this idea that it's okay to be an introvert. Again, I don't know why people need to be told that, but apparently they do, since all these books wanted to keep saying it, so I'll say it too. It's okay to be an introvert. So the next two books that I read were both written by the same person, and that is The Introverted Leader and also Quiet Influence by Jennifer B. Kahnweller. Now, my main problem with these two books is that Jennifer Kahnweller, whatever her name was, she is an extrovert. Uh, and so even though in these books she tries to say that introverts have strengths and that it's okay to be an introvert, honestly someone go through and count how many times I say that praise in this video because it's ridiculous. But despite repeating that, most of these two books are about how to cope with being in an extroverted world and so the way it's framed really does make out like being an introvert is actually a weakness and that she the extrovert is going to come in and help fix you um i didn't really appreciate it i think i definitely prefer books about introversion written by introverts i guess just even in this case own voices are still valuable it makes it feel a little bit more authentic and like the person actually knows what they're talking about not just like oh well my husband is introverted so i know all about introverts let me tell you how you should act i will say though that in terms of giving advice that was well structured i think that these two books did the best the introverted leader focused everything around four p's so that was prepare presence push and practice uh, which I thought was a good structure. I do think the presence and push elements of her advice were much more trying to make introverts act like extroverts but there was still some good advice in there. I will also say in The Introverted Leader I was expecting some leadership advice but for the most part it's just general work advice. I don't think that this woman really has much leadership experience or knows what it's like to be a leader so there really wasn't any leadership advice in there which was disappointing given the name. Quiet Influence was a lot more just general life advice. It was also structured into different categories so I've actually written down in my notes listening, writing, social media. Hmm there were others so I guess when I was writing my notes I kind of got bored and missed what the others were but I did think it had good categories. It was a little bit more focused on strengths rather than just advice on how to fix you. But overall I didn't think the advice in Quiet Influence was as useful as the introverted leader. That could possibly be just because I was more interested in advice 
in a work setting than a personal setting. Uh, then the worst one that I read, I think, was The Irresistible Introvert by Michaela Chung. So this one, unfortunately, I felt like it was written by an introvert who thinks that introversion means being insecure. Introverts certainly can be insecure, but I would say that's more because of the extroverted culture that they're being raised in rather than an innate attribute of introversion. So right from the start, I didn't really agree with this book. It spent a lot of time, I felt, just kind of whining about how awful it had been growing up in an extroverted culture, which, like, as I said, I agree that being an introvert growing in a highly extroverted culture probably can be pretty awful. But, like, does crying about it in your book really help anybody? I don't think so. And just in general, the advice was very scattered and unstructured and surface level. It felt more like something that should have just been a blog rather than a full-blown book and like it was just padded out into a book and I think it was still a pretty short book. So I definitely wouldn't recommend that one. Now I have kind of been going from best to worst but I do have a couple of here that I actually didn't take notes on. So again, great reviewing quality from me. So I'm not sure exactly where these go in the ranking. I guess somewhere in the middle. I probably could have talked about them somewhere in the middle but like I'm not doing that. I'm doing it now. Um, so basically I had a look at the reviews and I used them to trigger some memories and I'll tell you something about what I think I thought about them. So firstly The Introvert Advantage by Marty Olson Laney. I think it's actually Dr. Marty Olson Laney. This book covered uh, so many topics but it was mainly about different aspects of life and the problems introverts might have in those aspects of their life and how they might cope with them. So it had some really good advice but again it was more focused on introversion as a problem rather than introversion as a strength. So it wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, again if you're someone who really struggles with being an introvert and how to live your life as an introvert some of this advice might be relevant for you. A lot of the topics weren't relevant to me. There was a section on dating, a section on like socializing, a section on parenting. I don't care about any of those but I do think there were some good tips scattered throughout it that I did find useful. Just it was a lot to get through just for a few random tips but you know I listened to it on audiobook so it wasn't too much of a burden so I would recommend listening to this audiobook if you're looking for some tips about how to cope with introversion in your life. You could potentially just read the chapters for the topics that you think you need help in uh, and that would probably give you what you need. Then I also read Introvert Entrepreneur by Beth Bueller. So again, this one covered a lot of the same topics about it being okay to be an introvert. And so I think the main reason I didn't write notes for this one is I was just getting quite bored of that by now. <laughs> and primarily this was just a coach giving her experiences about setting up a coaching business. Nothing in it was particularly mind-blowing. I don't think there is any particularly great entrepreneur advice. Perhaps if you're an introvert and you're completely lost about how to start working for yourself uh, this might be useful but I think it was still quite surface level and not very in-depth and a lot of it was quite just common sense and not something you couldn't figure out by yourself. So I am certain that there are much better entrepreneurship books. Entrepreneur entrepreneurship so I am certain that there are much better entrepreneurship books out there that you could get a lot more from, even if they're primarily directed towards more extroverted people. So those were all eight introvert books that I read. Um, I think to summarize, I would probably most recommend Quiet, Introvert Power, and The Introverted Leader, although taking in mind that The Introverted Leader doesn't really have any leadership advice, uh, and then also potentially quiet power if you have or are a teenager. Uh, but the other ones I probably wouldn't bother with. As I said, I was looking for books that would tell me uh, strategies that I could use to really get the most out of my introversion and the strengths that it gives me. I didn't really find that in any of these books. So if you have any recommendations of introvert books that you think would do a better job of that, please leave them down in the comments. Otherwise, that's all from me today. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you next time.